Hello guys, welcome back to another creative journaling session. Today, I'm taking you along on a delightful culinary adventure as I document my ramen date with my parents at Hakata Tonichi followed by dessert at BLK 513. Our culinary journey begins at Hakata Tonichi, where we indulge in their signature dish, the Super Buta Ramen. We also ordered gyoza, chicken teriyaki, and I even tried Sapporo beer for the first time. The interior of the restaurant exudes an authentic Japanese vibe which added to the overall experience. After satisfying our savory cravings, we headed to BLK 513 for some sweet treats. I opted for their dark side cup with three toppings which was an absolute delight. Before we jump into the journaling process, let me show you the supplies I've gathered for today's session. I like to have them ready on my journaling desk so that I won't get distracted looking for them in my stash during the journaling process. Now that we've gone through the supplies, it's time to start journaling. Along with these memories, I'm including the special napkin from the Hakata Tonichi with the restaurant's logo, serving as a tangible reminder of our wonderful dining experience. Incorporating free mementos like this into my journal adds an extra layer of authenticity and personalization. Plus, Using these free mementos not only adds visual interest to my journal spread, but also allows me to relive the experience each time I flip through its pages. Now I'm arranging the big elements, such as the printed photos, memo pad, and the restaurant logo from the napkin. When starting a new page, I begin by arranging the large elements first, 
then add the accent pieces later. Playing around with the layout and composition of these elements is my favorite part of the creative journaling process as it allows me to let my creativity flow freely and practice mindfulness. So I take my time during this stage, shifting and rearranging until I find the pleasing arrangement that captures the essence of the memory I'm documenting. To create tiny photos such as this, I use the Maldiv Collage mobile app to arrange 9 images on one 4x6 inch sheet. This allows me to efficiently print lots of tiny memories in one go. Since I don't have a photo printer, I send the files to an online printing service and they deliver the printed copies at home. Or I take the files in a photo printer shop in the mall. These two methods are the most affordable printing options for me. I think I want to place the ramen and beer photos inside the memo pad frame. The memo pad will serve as a decorative border to those food shots. Then our family photo will go below the memo pad. Beside the Hakata Tonichi logo, I carefully cut out from the napkin. The yogurt dessert snapshot from BLK513 will be placed at the page bottom space. By strategically positioning these key elements, I'm recreating the flow of our afternoon's food adventures. I'll take my time rearranging until the layout feels just right, allowing the photos and memorabilia to guide the storytelling. Now that I'm happy with the layout, it's time to start gluing. I like using this Scotch permanent glue stick to adhere papers such as this napkin logo and a 3M double-sided tape to adhere photos. For paper elements, the glue stick provides a nice even coat of adhesive. When sticking down photos, I cut small pieces of the double-sided tape and place them on the corners on the back of each photo. The tape allows the photo to stay firmly in place and prevents them from ripping the page if they are lifted. Next, I'll be adding washi tape accents. I chose this washi tape because its color matches the color scheme of the memo pad, creating a harmonious visual flow across the entire page. As you can see, the washi tape not only adds a decorative element, but also enhances the overall aesthetic appeal of the page, tying together different elements of the design. Now, I'll use this adorable sumo wrestler clear stamp from the Sakura Lala 365 Nippon collection to further embellish the page, adding layers of texture and visual interest. I'll be stamping this stamp onto a scrap piece of sticker paper, carefully inking up the intricate lines and curves with the VersaFine Claire Morning Mist Pigment Ink. 
Once stamped, I can fussy cut around the image creating a custom sticker element to strategically place within the composition. The sumo stamp perfectly captures the spirit of our authentic Japanese dining experience. Next, I want to incorporate this adorable yogurt stamp from Mommy Lay Designs to capture our delightful dessert experience at BLK513. I'll stamp this directly onto the page. Since I'm not skilled in drawing, Stamps are one of my favorite creative journey supplies to decorate my page. I love that I can easily reuse them to create intricate designs without the pressure of drawing freehand. Now, with this red click art retractable marker pen, I'll add a striking pop of color by hand lettering the text BLK513 directly onto the page. The brilliant color will make the text pop, instantly drawing attention to the name of the dessert spot we visited. Next, I'll be adding the date using this Heidi Swap Roller Date Stamp. Now that we've embellished our page, it's time to add the journaling text. I'll use my Kaweco Skyline Sport Mint Fountain Pen in extra fine nib with Lamy Blue Black Ink to write the rest of the journaling text describing our experience that day. I like using a fountain pen for the smooth fluid writing it produces. When journaling about our lunch date, I'll briefly mention some key highlights to complement the vivid visual memories captured through the photos. Just a few concise sentences are enough to set the scene and capture the essence of the experience. Furthermore, I'll be using this midliner yellow highlighter to mark important keywords like the specific dishes and drinks we ordered. This not only helps them stand out on the page, but also adds a pop of color, making the journal spread more engaging and dynamic. With the main elements arranged on the page, I'm taking a moment to scan over the entire composition, looking for any empty spaces that could use some extra decorative accents. My eye is drawn to the area under the BLK513 text and the date, where there seems to be a bit of black space calling out for embellishment. So, I'll draw whimsical line designs on those empty spaces. Drawing creative borders or lines are great alternatives if you don't have strips of washi tape. It adds a personal touch to the spread while filling in those empty spaces beautifully. And there we have it, a documented ramen date and dessert adventure in my journal. I hope you enjoyed joining me on this journey where we transformed everyday memories into creative journal pages. Which creative journal technique that I incorporated into this spread would you like to try next time you journal? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, happy journaling!